Hello everyone and welcome to the Rotterdam update on the day of the grand final of the Eurovision Song Contest. If you followed our content over this past uh, week, you've seen that in the talk show we've discussed a lot of the show elements of this year's Eurovision Song Contest. The interval acts, the opening acts, the postcards and the presenters. Of course, after talking so much about these presenters, it was time to talk to them. You were just on the Eurovision stage. How was it? It was great, strange, because normally we, we are performers, so you want to do something. This is my new job forever. I'm giving up on makeup. I'm becoming a full host after this. This was amazing. This was the first rehearsal with um, some audience. For, for the first time, it felt like, okay, this is how it should be. So honored that we are going to do this. Tonight we will have uh, three and a half thousand people. <laughs> I think then little audience will be a little nervous. Yeah. Yeah. This is the week that everything's gonna happen. I was a little bit sweaty, like oh my gosh, I hope everything goes well. Don't fall those heels. I'm a fan of heels, but that's I, why I don't wear heels. So is there a life after Eurovision? Is there a life after no. Saturday? <laughs> We're gonna have a good meal, nasty snack meal, fries with everything. Sweet so <laughs> fries. Lots of fries. Ketchup, mayonnaise and onions. Yep. It's something Dutch. Frikandel special. Yes. Frikandel. And uh, I think a vacation will be great. I'm looking forward to a very cold, <laughs> big glass of white wine. <laughs> Already several times during this week, we've taken you all the way back to the delegation bubble, which is a place primarily for the artists of this year's Eurovision Song Contest. They can relax there between performances and press conferences. But it's also the place where the rest of the people involved in the show go to sometimes. And uh, we spoke today to the person who is in charge of the styling of this year's contest. Uh, this is where we uh, do all the finishing touches for the looks for all the dancers and uh, artists that uh, will be performing in the opening and interval act and um, the final touches for some of the dresses for the host. Well, these final touches are mainly um, things that didn't feel right on screen. Um, for example, when uh, something uh, shows in the fabric, something pushes through, then we see if we can like fix it from the inside uh, without uh, ruining the dress, obviously. We really went uh, 3D with all the outfits, so it's not just um, skin-tight catsuits um, uh, that they're used to, so we used all these uh, weird 3D shapes. We have uh, nine different opening and interval acts and every act tells their own story. So within one act um, we have this very clear concept, um, for example the power of water, it's um, about uh, the Netherlands, uh, uh, like three quarters of it uh, being beneath sea level, um, our constant um, um, fight but also love for the sea. Um, uh, and uh, conceptually we try to uh, translate that into the clothing um, so we used shell materials and we uh, looked for ways to make fabric look fully soaked uh, without being actually wet. We have some patterns over here um, it, uh, at our atelier in Amsterdam where we uh, have been working for one and a half year and everything. Um, we have this times 20 uh, for all the looks that we created. We created over 300, 330 looks for all the dancers and the artists and the hosts. Um, so these are the, the ones, uh, the patterns for the clothing. Um, yeah, for the things that we have been working on still here. So we hit uh, obviously some of the um, actual uh, pieces. Yeah, can you tell us wh what this is? We thought this is such an abstract shape that uh, nobody will really recognize what it will be for. Um, okay, and notes over there also do. <laughs> it's okay. We've been working for 
well now one and a half year on all these looks and uh, we can't wait to show our little babies to the world so I would, uh, I would love to tell you all about this but let's keep it a secret for <laughs> for just a couple more days you saw an interview with the head of styling for this year's Eurovision Song Contest and you will see a lot of the costumes that he created for this year's competition tonight at the grand final during the opening and interval acts. It is the day of that big final and uh, that means that a few people can actually attend the show here in the arena. We're very happy about that of course. But because most of the people and most of the viewers that watch this show right now will probably be watching all these shows on TV, we would like to give you a small look into how it is going to that arena, going really inside the venue for the Eurovision Song Contest shows. The most important thing about tonight are of course those 26 countries competing for victory or maybe you've narrowed it down to a select group of three, four, five entries that are in the race. But between the, uh, the moment that these countries perform and the moment we find out who is the winner, there is an interval act. And Germ Bakker is the head of show, he created this interval act. The grand final we kick off with uh, the flag parade. It's kind of a tradition uh, for Eurovision. In the flag parade we want to present uh, the 26 finalists uh, of, uh, of the, the Eurovision Song Contest uh, this year. Um, we, the, the, the opening act is based on a very famous uh, pop song uh, released already in the 60s but covered uh, many times uh, later on. I think everybody knows the song. And one of our youngest DJ talents, uh, Peter Gabriel, has, uh, has made a producer and remix of, of that song. And uh, also integrated in, in the flag parade is the design of uh, our tiny house. It's also a symbol uh, this year in the postcards, uh, but also at several uh, other moments uh, in our show. And also in the flag parade. It will be very special, I think. Uh, there will be a great design on, on the big LED wall, but also uh, by augmented reality. Uh, it's a it's a high pace, so it's a little bit shorter and quicker than uh, the former years. I think we've got a very special interval acts. Um, one I want to emphasize is uh, the act called uh, Music Binds Us. It's a, it's a big interval act with uh, one of our famous DJs, uh, Everjack, top DJ, always in the top 10 of the world. Uh, and we want to tell the story of our popular DJs and the dance scene from the Netherlands. Um, and also the team Open Up fits uh, at this act because uh, we are going to open up to different kinds of music styles. So Everjack will perform with a classical orchestra uh, based on his, uh, his uh, biggest hits. And uh, I think it's going to be very special because I think in the first time in history we have uh, split the whole interval, interval act up, up in two moments. We start, we kick off with a, a special movie uh, directed by one of the famous uh, directors uh, of, of the Netherlands. And then we switch life to, uh, to our state here in, in, in Rotterdam on a very special way. Uh, so uh, I would, would advise to check this out. That's going to be very special. Um, you know, it's the 65th edition of the Eurovision Song Contest. <clears throat> and that's why we want to stand by, by our, our legacy. And that's why we uh, invited former winners to do their winning song uh, once more. 
Uh, and they're not going to do it on stage, but on several rooftops here in Rotterdam. Uh, so it's going to be, I think, very spectacular. We've got Lordi on the rooftop. We've got Monselmelo, but also uh, Dutch winners like uh, Lenny Coer and Tietjen. Uh, so especially for the Eurovision fans, but I think for everybody, it, it's great to see them back on a very unique location uh, here in Rotterdam. One of the most interesting moments in tonight's running order is, of course, the moment where Jendrik from Germany goes all over to the act from Finland, who, of course, put their middle fingers up, which Jendrik just told them not to do. So it's the year of the middle fingers, and that's why we went backstage with the German delegation to talk to the person in this Mittelfinger suit. I'm Sophia Euskirchen, and I'm from Germany. I'm the peace sign. <laughs> you can see it. <laughs> I don't feel hate. I just feel sorry. I was on tour with Jendrik and he asked me if I can be a middle finger in his music video. He wanted to have a person like a little grumpy person who smokes. So he asked me and I said yes, of course. And then he uh, put this video to the Eurovision Song Contest. It feels crazy because I... Uh, I never expect that. If you knew, would you still have said yes, sure? Um, yes, I think yes, yes, I would say yes, yeah. Every time again. It was not allowed to have the middle finger on stage, so we decided to be uh, that I am then a peace sign. It's not comfortable, it's uh, because my, my, my arm, uh, I have to hold it up for a long time and um, there are so many pins in my hair and we have to put pins here so that it holds because I'm dancing like <laughs> you know <laughs> and this is um, yeah hard and it hurts and I feel sorry. So sorry. the message is the most important thing don't feel hate to other people who hate you be be nice to everyone and just just <laughs> yeah, feeling sorry for them. And I, I hope to be that we come in the top 10 because Jendrik worked so hard for that. I don't feel <laughs> Over this past week, there were five entries nominated for the Eurostory Award. The award for the Eurovision song with the best lyrics. You've watched them all, one by one being nominated, and now you're going to see who actually won the award. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. For me, especially, <laughs> because I'm like yeah. I'm the lyricist of the group, uh, that's pretty special, and it's like the first lyric prize I win in my life, actually. So thank you. <laughs> you will be reminded for the rest of my life. Thank you. This goes like right in my house on the top of my TV. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Wow. Amazing. Great yeah. definition. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's pretty like on point. On point. Yeah. Oh my god, I never thought about it. Um no, it's a it's a coincidence. <laughs> it's a truly a coincidence. That's like um yeah, we just like show the difference between us and them. Like basically. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The special part like where the bass solo is, is like when it says uh, la gente purtroppo parla non sa di che cosa parla and that means like people tol always talk and give t comments but they don't know what they're talking about so this like represents the whole message of the song that is about like don't caring about what other people tell you. And we're like yeah! yeah that's a banger! <laughs> <laughs> Well, we think this is just an uh, important message for everyone to, to know, like, uh, what we want to do with our music is, like, make other people, maybe that uh, feel, like, judged by society, feel 
okay with themselves and maybe see that there are other people like being who they are and not caring about other people are telling you maybe this can help to make them feel like not alone so we think this is an important message for everyone because it was like the most un unexpected thing in our entire life we like bro this song this is a rock song and it's not like what you normally bring to Sanremo so winning with this song meant uh, like everything for us um, it's like something is moving in our country and maybe rock music can uh, come back to the top of the of the uh, list of the charts and so it was really really meaningful for all of us she she didn't cry she just yelled a <laughs> lot of bad words but it was emotional too very emotional. <laughs> Maybe the, the, the message that we share because we just we always try to tell people just to be who they are and feel comfortable to be uh, themselves. So I think that this is something that we have in common. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you everybody. <laughs> Italy has won this year's Eurostory Award. They are the Eurovision entry with the best lyrics. But will they also be the winner of this year's Eurovision Song Contest? We will find that out tonight. Thank you for watching all of the ESC Daily and OGAE content this week. And there's one more moment where you have to tune in, which is right after that grand final, when we will do our after talk here in the press center and look back at all the results. Enjoy the grand final tonight and thanks for watching.